Welcome to MEB. This is episode 18, The Atomic Method. Last episode, I covered the molecular method of solving reactive material balances. In this episode, we'll cover the second of the three possibilities, the atomic method. In the atomic method, the material balances are on atoms. Unlike molecules, atoms are not generated or consumed during a chemical reaction. The bonds between the atoms are simply broken and reformed in different configurations. Therefore, generation and consumption terms are zero for the atomic method, and the general balance equation simplifies to in is equal to out, even though this is a reactive process. The atomic method is pretty cool, because you don't actually need to know the reaction stoichiometry, or even how many reactions are happening at all. One, two, or ten reactions could be taking place in the reactor, and none of them would matter, because atoms in must always equal atoms out. Let's take the same example that we had last time, where 100 moles per minute of hydrogen peroxide comes into the reactor, with 30 moles per minute exiting the reactor, with requested molar flow rates of water and oxygen out of the reactor. In the atomic method degrees of freedom, count the number of unknowns as usual. Just like last time, the two unknowns are the two requested flow rates. There is no need to add degrees of freedom for any chemical reactions, because again, we are ignoring them. The number of material balances is equal to the number of independent atomic species. In this case, I have two atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. As before, physical constraints and process specifications would also count here, but I don't have any in this example, so the degree of freedom is simply 2 minus 2 equals 0. As mentioned before, balances are simply in is equal to out, but I have to multiply the number of atoms in a given molecule by the molar flow rate of that molecule. Let's do the hydrogen balance first. There are two atoms of hydrogen per mole of H2O2. Therefore, two times 100 moles of hydrogen come into the reactor. The hydrogen coming out of the reactor is two moles of hydrogen per mole of H2O2 times 30, plus two moles of hydrogen per mole of H2O times the molar flow rate of water. This equation has only one unknown, which is the molar flow rate of water. If I solve it, I get 70 moles per minute. Now let's do the oxygen balance. There are two oxygen atoms per mole of H2O2, one atom per mole of H2O, and two atoms per mole of O2. So I have 2 times 100 coming in, and 2 times 30 plus 1 times the exit flow rate of water, plus 2 times the exit flow rate of O2 coming out. Plugging in the 70 moles per minute for water that I just solved for, I get 35 moles per minute of oxygen in the exit stream. Notice that these answers match my conclusions from the molecular method, even though this method was completely different. Neat! Practically speaking, I find the atomic balance easy to remember and the atomic balance is conceptually easy to derive. However, there tend to be a lot of terms in the material balance equations, so the equations are a little bit cumbersome to solve elegantly sometimes. Additionally, you have to be well organized so that you don't forget anything or any terms. The atomic balance works equally well whether there is one reaction or many. So, if you're trying to decide which method you should use and you have three or more reactions, the atomic method is a great choice because the complexity doesn't scale with the number of reactions. Episode 18 Learning Objectives Now that this episode is over, you should be able to 1. Perform a degree of freedom analysis for the atomic method and 2. Use the atomic method to solve a reactive material balance. That'll conclude this episode. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.